Welcome to a new episode of the John Q Podcast, where we talk about all things related to pickleball, gear, and technology. And hats. And hats. Welcome, Eddie. <laughs> How you doing, John? Good. I can't believe you wore a fedora. Well, you know, you and your melon gang kind of got on a, <laughs> a tangent there, so I had to bring everybody back into the fold with a real hat. <laughs> You like it? <laughs> I like it. I dig it. <laughs> so as an archaeologist, I am not allowed to wear a fedora. It's not really be... a fedora. It's more of a cowboy yeah, hat. Yeah, more of a say. cowboy hat. Yeah. But uh, yeah. <laughs> old school. What is it, felt? Yeah, wool felt. Okay. Very nice. Thanks. Well, I used so to work we... at a uh, restaurant called Roy Rogers. Kind of an East Coast thing, I guess. Chicken and hamburgers. I've heard of it. And so they made you wear a hat like this okay. every day to work. It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> It's very hot. A wool, wool felt hot. And a hat. red polyester shirt with white piping. And oh, yeah, it's terrible. Good times. Yeah. But we're bringing it back for today. <laughs> so this, uh, the background of this is somebody in the comments section commented, that, when's it, Eddie going to get a melon hat? And you've had a melon hat longer than I have, and maybe longer than even Will and Chris. I'm pretty sure. Yeah? Yeah. So your response was something like, they, they, they took my vibe. I'm going to wear something new. And I, I wrote, uh, You Eddie's dorks gonna... have no originality. You had to steal my thunder. <laughs> So I wrote, Eddie's going to come with a fedora, <laughs> jokingly, and he does come with a fedora. So Bring here we it. go. All Let's right. Go. Big show today. Big show. We've got a lot to cover, and you've got to be out of here in an hour and 15, so let's jump into it. I did want to relay one of our stories from the past week, which is we both got a tour of the Babylon headquarters. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, they're very cool. Big yeah. shout out to, to Rose and Sally yeah. for inviting us, and um, i trying to recall the other folks that gave us a tour and, and sat with us in the Jaren conference room. and uh, Anthony, I believe. Anthony, thank you. And yeah. who? Jaron? Is that his name? Maybe. Super Good memory, nice Eddie. Good memory. I don't know. So it turns out, and I did not know this, that there is that the North American headquarters and the only like brick-and-mortar Babolat right. shop and factory is, is two miles, respectively, from each of our homes, maybe three miles total. So it took me five minutes to drive there, and you rode your bike. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's massive. They, you know, it's just a big factory and big office space, and probably uh, a football field size uh-huh. worth of uh, just warehouse. Yeah, tennis and pickleball and padel. Yeah, and padel. Mm-hmm. And they sent me their paddles. They have three three paddles out on the market right now. They sent those to me a couple of weeks ago. I haven't had a chance to hit with them. And we sat in the conference room and talking about the paddle technology and stuff that goes inside the paddles. And they even showed us some videos of their factory with the thermoforming process, the layup. And that's the first time I had seen. That's kind of a tightly held secret that I've noticed. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of videos from various companies and they're reluctant to show exactly, you know, how the sausage is, is made, you know, the, the things that go into the mold before it's actually pressed and heated, right? So that was really cool to see how, how these workers – are just adding stickers here and there and wrapping. It's an unbelievably manual process. Oh, yeah. After watching that, I'm like, how are they selling these paddles for so cheap? Not Babylon, but every paddle manufacturer with a right. thermoform paddle. Right. My takeaway from that trip was it's a lot of placing of stickers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For, I don't know, 20, 30 different stickers that, you know, carbon fiber stickers, yeah. fiberglass stickers for the face, the grip, the edge. There's like a recipe they were looking yeah. at, and everything's numbered, and they put you know one here and measure from the top and the bottom, and, and wrap it around here, and it's just wow, it's just wow, it's fascinating. <laughs> it I played fascinating. with the, I think it's called the Striker model. Is that right? Yes. Is that their power paddle? Mm-hmm. The thin one. It it felt really good. I mean, I only played around with it in the basement a little bit, but okay. uh, uh, the feel of it was excellent. Yeah. Sweet spot seemed good. I look forward to getting it out there. We'll test them soon. Right on. All right, well, let's jump into kind of the PPA recap. I wanted to chat about some of the things that happened at Red Rock uh, in beautiful Utah, our neighboring state. First of all, I really enjoyed, so the first couple of days, Rob Cassidy was a commentator. Along, He's good. Along with Misha and, uh, or Mish, I guess, uh, and I think he sat with a couple other people. But I was so impressed with him. I, I'm pretty sure he must have had voice lessons because he had... His voice sounded great, really good sense of humor, witty, and being a professional pickleball player, 
he knows the game and knows the inside jokes with all the players. So I just, I really got a kick out of listening to him. I thought he was really good. It's so difficult to strike a balance for the audience, right? Because you have some who have never seen pickleball before, others who are five O's. And to, to capture the interest of all of those people is really mm-hmm. difficult. And he does a great job. Yeah. I got a kick out of Rob. So did you get a chance? I, I know you didn't see much. I was kind of watching. I've been working on the Engage Pro 1 series review, which I'll probably release tomorrow. Mm. And as I've been, you know, filming B-roll and writing the script, I've been, I was watching over the weekend various games. But but I did tune in to see Zay Nevertil defeat J.W. Johnson in singles, which was pretty incredible because Zane hasn't been playing singles for a good while, and he just comes in. He was just having fun, playing loose, and, man, he was just killing it. Is there something in particular he was doing well? You know, he was just slapping the ball. Every chance he got, <laughs> he would just, you know, slap it. He does have a unique style. Uh-huh. Yeah, and and it just, just worked for him, and he actually – made it all the way to the semis. He was taken back down by Christian Alshon. And uh, so, yeah, working his way through the singles draw, I, I don't know if he intends on continuing hmm. in singles in future tournaments regularly, but I don't think he does. I think I've t- heard him talk on the team. I but, haven't really seen much from him outside of MLP. Well, I mean, he's he's you know still consistent in doubles, but definitely not in, in singles. So, But I did see, uh, you know, I, it was like a cell phone camera for the match with the semifinal match with Christian Alshon that somebody took and I think memes of pickleball put it up on Instagram and it was I don't know how legitimate this is but he was definitely doing a spin serve to Christian oh, yeah. Alshon I don't know if it was warm up <laughs> or what but and the, the referee wasn't calling it he just wasn't watching apparently but but he got him it was twice I saw the, the spin serve so interesting Zane <laughs> bringing back the spin serve if you can why not <laughs> Uh, other highlights, so um, Jack Sock. Oh, man. Uh, not only is he playing with the new Selkirk paddle, which I have a couple, we'll, we'll play with those, and you know I'm not allowed to talk about it until it's released in May. But, um, but regardless, I don't know how the pa- paddle plays, and it's not the paddle that was making Jack Sock play so well. But, man, he is a gamer. He's, he's a competitor. He's not... Doesn't nearly have the the kitchen game experience as other professional pickleball players, but when he decides to turn it on, he turns it on, and it's perfect for for singles. How long until he takes a a singles title? Oh, it's coming soon. I, with all the chaos that's going on in the men's singles right now, yeah. Not to mention Anna Lee Waters being absent for this month, and women's opening up, you know, different opportunities. But you know, Ben has been challenged and challenged and challenged, and he's you know. I don't even think he's still number one in singles. He's still the goat overall for for pickleball, but but uh, they're just so many people are getting so good, and Jack Sock I think is is rushing to the top of the heap there. And he did not have an easy time of it. No, he did not have as an easy far draw. As, uh, the draw, right? Right. He had uh, he defeated Kwang Kwang Dong, which I I think the proper pronunciation, which the commentators were pronouncing it, is is not Kwang Dong. I'll have to oh. I'll have to. To learn how to say it properly. He also defeated Hayden Patrickin Mm -hmm. along the way. And then, yeah, uh, Christian Alshon as well. None of those people are are easy matches. No. Yeah. um, Another big moment in the tournament was that uh, Andre Diascu and Gabe Tardio defeated the Johns brothers. And and they pickled them (laughs) in the third game. (laughs) It was It was nuts. You know, Dave Fleming... Said it correctly that that Gabe is the the X factor in that pairing between t- between Gabe and and Andre. When he turns it on, when he gets in the zone, it's just insanity. There's so much chaos on the court, and they just can't. They couldn't miss in the third game. I'm pretty sure that's the first time that the Johns brothers have ever been pickled in a PPA tournament. You think that was more of Gabe or less of the Johns that we were seeing? I think the Johns were playing their game, and they, they yeah. just got steamrolled. It was more Andre and Gabe. I mean, they they did not miss a single shot. Every speed up was on point. It was it was bananas how good they played. Maybe they uh, listened to our podcast and heard your being in the zone tips. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm sure, that was it. <laughs> I'm sure it was it. <laughs> yeah, and then Dylan Frazier and JW take gold and, and men's doubles. They eventually defeated by SQ and Tardio. You know, I, I noticed that Tardio does not have his high high peaks with. 
JW and, and Dylan because they're all a crew, right? And I think yeah. Gabe was was kind of adopted by that crew, and he's always looked up to, and they've always been they've always been his seniors, not only in age but also in terms of skill level. Now I think he's close to them, but he it's, mentally it's just so hard to overcome that that hurdle. You know what I mean? When you play with somebody, you've played with them your entire time you've been playing pickleball they've always been better than you and then you start getting as good as them still they're going to beat you on the court yeah sometimes though that puts the pressure on the other person that's true you know because they've been in a leadership position all that time the pressure's all on them there's no pressure on the underling maybe we'll see a turnaround in, in future tournaments coming next week soon. you heard it here first yeah uh jansen and pisnick defeated anna bright uh and a, a and Alec, Kelly Smith for gold. I did not get a chance to watch much of that match, but, you know, Anna and Kelly, new matchup. They probably couldn't get their chemistry together, if if I'm guessing correct. Uh, ben and Edda Wright defeated uh, Anna Bright and James Ignatowicz for, for mixed gold. That was that was really cool to see the interview. Edda, Edda was so thankful to Ben. And, I mean, she, that was her first gold in, in PPA. Cool. And, I uh, like her. Yeah, and she's she's such a sweetheart. Mm -hmm. I love Etta, but she's she's vicious on the court. That's a good combination. And then, wow, uh, Mary Brasha, her, her also also her first gold in the PPA. She defeated Leah Jansen for uh, women's singles. Leah did have have some issues with her diabetes. Uh, she was giving herself an insulin injection in the second game, I think, and and really had a rough time of it. But that's not to diminish at all uh, Mary's performance during that game. Can you imagine dealing with that kind of thing in, in the midst of high-level competition? No. I mean, just dealing with it on a day-to-day -day basis is yeah. challenging enough. Yeah, I mean, when I get hungry and my insulin drops, I'm Oh, I've hopeless. seen you in that state. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I, was, I was playing you and Paula, and I was just standing there, locking my knees, yeah. just like, <laughs> was, give me something there. to eat. There right. nothing there. So, yeah, but we still I'm, took I'm glad Leia is able to it was good on her also. She took a medical timeout mm -hmm. in the third game. She came back despite the fact she wasn't playing 100%. So I appreciate, appreciate the fact that she was able to do that and gave that to Mary. Can you imagine Mary not getting the win because of a withdrawal? You know, right. so yep. Mary couldn't be a sweeter person. She's one of the you know biggest hearted people in the, the PPA. So I was really, really happy to see her win. And man... Her baseline drives couldn't be more accurate. She had to paint. She she painted the line at least a dozen times throughout those three games, at least just pinpoint accuracy. I also heard that uh, maybe Riley heard our podcast last week. <laughs> That's that, I'm sure. Where is Riley Newman? Where in the world is Riley Newman? He was in <laughs> right. South America apparently, and and he posted on Instagram his new schedule. So he will be returning to <laughs> professional pickleball starting in the. MLP Atlanta on May 9th through the 12th. And then he also put up several PPA events he'll be attending. He'll be attending about one PPA per month, so a little less than, than half, I think, of the remaining PPAs this year, plus all MLPs. Will he be in San Clemente? He will be in San Clemente, if all right. I remember correctly. So. Full house, then. Full house. We'll see him there. Right on. I think I cut that out of our last podcast. So it just went too long. But you and I are going to San Clemente, and we are playing the in the tournament, and we will be walking around. So if anybody is going to San Clemente for the PPA tournament, then come look us up. We're unmistakable. I was at a local tournament <laughs> last weekend just walking around, and a couple of guys said hello. They're, oh, that's awesome. They're, uh, frequent watchers of the podcast. Hi, guys. Did you get their name? Uh, Zach and John, I believe. Look at you. Good um, memory, Eddie. Solid players, but... Um, Were they in your bracket? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Did you play them? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I believe so. You and Paula got uh, bronze. Bronze. But we never had a chance to get to the gold and silver. They took the... It was two pools, mm -hmm. and they took the top from each pool. So we were second in our pool and never got a chance to That's really silly. battle for... That's a weird for gold. format. It is. A little strange. I think they were pressed for time and limited courts, so... Okay. But it was a fun day, and it was uh, it's so nice to to talk to people about the podcast. It's yeah, neat. yeah, that's awesome. Has that happened to you before? Yeah, nice. Yeah. When I go to PPA events, I've had a few people come up, but I always chalk it up to walking around with Chris and Will. <laughs> but there was a few times that I was walking around by myself and, and got got recognized. That's it, very it blows neat. my mind. Yeah, it's very cool. 
So let's move on. We've got a lot of paddles in our paddle bracket, and this will be our final qualifiers week. Yeah. For the paddle bracket. Very exciting. And next week we jump into our single elimination. Uh-huh. Nice. This week was Kevlar, Kevlar paddles. And we by no means did we use every Kevlar paddle out on the market, and there are some good ones out there like the Spartus that I don't have yet that I wish we could have included. But we've got a good sample of the existing. How many did we hit today? Eight? Seven, I think. Seven? Yeah. Eight. You're right. Eight. So let's jump into it, Eddie. Very comprehensive (laughs) review. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Hold on. Let me pull up this sheet because I lost it. All right. First up on the docket, the iconic 6-0 Ruby. So this has been my primary paddle now. I played with it as my primary for three months, and and it's been I've been playing hitting with so many other paddles lately for different reviews that I don't feel like it's my primary anymore. But we'll talk about that later uh, in terms of what I may be going to for my primary. Actually, we already talked about it. Probably awesome. the Colin or the Anna uh, Gen Three Yola. Anyway, this is you know I've I've loved this paddle since it came out, and we both hit with it today. Let's talk about our scores. So, again, our scoring system is up to five points for spin, power, pop, sweet spot, control, and an X-factor category. Mm -hmm. Eddie, (laughs) what do you think about the Ruby? John, I really want to love this paddle. It's so attractive. I love the way it looks. I've hit it now three times, and it just doesn't sit well with me. Not for you, huh? No. Something about it. Something about my mechanics or what I do with the paddle, mm-hmm. I just it just doesn't fit with me, and I don't know why that is because I want to love it. This is actually exciting to me because we've been so similar on so many paddles now that mm-hmm. it almost feels like we're cheating and and you know we're looking not at even each other's close answers. On this one. And we are not even close on this one. So, what did you give it for the different different categories? So I gave it a three for power and pop. Okay. It's fine. Mm-hmm. It's, it's fair to middling. Uh, four on control. I do feel like um, drops are are very good with it. Resets. Mm-hmm. Um, the spin wasn't there for me. And yeah. uh, again, I don't know what it is about it, whether it's the current state of where that paddle is right now. It's mm-hmm. been used pretty well. Yeah. But um, I wasn't getting good spin out of it today. The sweet spot good is good, though. I, okay. I give it a four on sweet spot and a one for X Factor because that gun is just so pretty. Now, to be fair on the spin, we're, you, we're using a used three month solid Ruby compared to brand new other paddles for the most part. The Thrive had been somewhat used also. So uh, the, the spin on the new Ruby is, is top tier for sure. I got over 2,300. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but yeah, it, it loses its spin just like every other raw textured surface. Okay. So. Uh, mine are above yours. I, I still, you know, I still love the ruby, so I gave it a, a four for spin. <laughs> Even maybe I should have given it a five for spin, but I gave it a four for power and a three for pop. So to me, drives from the baseline and full swings get better velocity than shorter swings from the kitchen, and that's something I talk about in the review. On the other hand, that that kind of more muted pop gives me a little more control. Like you said, the drops are, are pretty easy with this and the dinks. So the control, I gave it a four. And for the sweet spot, it's oversized for me. I gave it a four for a sweet spot. And I actually gave it a pretty high X factor just because this thing did hit the market and people were going bananas over this paddle for its looks. And it was kind of the first. Still is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. People, It's a super popular paddle. I actually gave it at a three for an X factor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That solid red face with the white trim yeah, and so accents. It looks great. And do you have a feel for like where the sweet spot is on this paddle? I think that may be part of the issue that I have with it. It's just, it, it doesn't seem to be where I expect it to where be. Where you want it to be. Yeah. I feel like it's pretty standard. But okay. Where do you feel like you're getting, getting not enough response out of the, the paddle? Like, I would say top third is where I would expect it to be okay. quite powerful and, and it doesn't feel like it's there for me. Maybe it's the way I have it weighted. I do have lead at, at 4 and 8 o'clock down on the lower mm-hmm. portion of it, mm-hmm. which might lead to a little more instability up top. And maybe it's just that I'm so used to it. You know, It plays just like I remember it and I've played with it for a long time. So I do, I do love this paddle. But yeah, interesting. Maybe you'd be 
better off with either no lead because it's it's a pretty high swing weight to start with. I think it's 118 for a hybrid paddle. That's that's pretty up there. Or a little lead further up somewhere along the, the sides. So. We'll keep trying. We'll keep trying. All right, moving on to the pickleball apes, the OG here. The, the been Pro around for a while. This is one of the yes. earlier ones. For right? sure, yeah. I think uh, Komodo was the first Kevlar paddle on the market, and apes was second, if I have my facts straight. Okay. But the apes Proline Energy S was their second in line, so the Proline Energy was their hyper-elongated one. Proline Energy S is also elongated, but it is 16.5 by 7.5 with the rounded top. So I'll jump in and go first here. So the spin on this, I feel, is is comparable to the Ruby. I think it was a little less brand new, but, but you know, I should test this paddle because I think the spin might be holding up a little better than the Ruby, although I haven't, I don't have the hours with this that I do with the ruby so i can't say that for sure so spin for power four it's a pretty powerful paddle with full swings it's also a very poppy paddle with short strokes so i gave it a four for pop now the issue with that added pop and power is control so the control suffers for me i I tend to if i'm not hyper focused on this i'll pop balls up at the kitchen or somebody speeds up on me and i try to reset it it goes two feet higher than i want and then it gets put away so i gave it only a two for control sweet spot i feel is pretty narrow on this compared to a lot of the other paddles we were playing with today probably because it is elongated when it has less width Mm -hmm. side to side so instead of being you know 7.8 inches wide for the hybrids it's 7.5 inches. And that little little bit of difference does make a big difference for performance. So for Sweet Spot, I gave it a three. How about you, Eddie? What were your scores? This is interesting, John. Today's the day of discrepancies between the two okay. of us. And that's okay. We, we <laughs> each have our perspectives on things. Um, I gave it a five on control, and I think that's the biggest area where we are wow, okay. separated on this. I was having no problem with um, finding the sweet spot on this, and that mm-hmm. led to really good control for me. Um, if this paddle had a lower swing weight or was more maneuverable, I'd be all over it every day. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a little heavy in the hand. It gives a little bit more power, I suppose, but mm-hmm. um, that heaviness kind of slowed me down a little bit. But man, the rest of it is... I really enjoyed the paddle. I had not played with this one before. I had um, played with the elongated, the true elongated, for quite some time. But um, this was a first for me with this uh, Proline Energy S. Great paddle. I give it a one for X Factor. Again, a little bit lighter weight. We'd be out, we'd be bumping that score up all day. I did give it. A, I didn't mention my X Factor score. I gave it a two for X Factor, uh, mostly because they're the OG, one of the OGs, and they did great getting this 3K woven carbon fiber slash Kevlar cloth with a peel ply texture of it. They were the first ones to do that combination, and everybody else has followed them. Yes, since. Your total score? My total score was 19. 19, and I was at a 20. So we got to about the same place, but in a much different way. Yeah, interesting. We're so different on control. That's Control is one of those metrics that's not really a metric. It's just kind of your subjective opinion. Clearly, metrics go into control, but your different body mechanics and the way you play it, maybe it's, you know, it is a little more head-heavy than the Hirachi X, but the Hirachi X has been one of your primaries for a while, and that's the same dimensions as this, this elongated 16.5 with the longer handle. Maybe it's something about the longer handle, too, that gives gives me more leverage with this and yep. causes balls to I do up. like to do the two-handed uh, third shot drop, which is mm-hmm. yeah very easy with this paddle. That's true. And with the Hirachi. That's a safer bet than, than trying to slice a third shot drop backhanded, right? Just in terms of the mechanics. Mm-hmm. All right, moving on to the Thrive Azul. Eddie, you want to go first? Liking this paddle. Okay, there's, yeah. there's a lot about this to like. Um, it, it's kind of what I was hoping the Ruby would be. Um, and But where the Ruby kind of falls down for me, the Thrive picks right up. Uh, I feel like the sweet spot is there. Power, it pop. I gave, I gave it fours all the way down the line, which is an excellent score. Um, and a 2-1 X Factor. Uh, again, it's, it's the Ruby plus. Okay. And that's, frankly, more than most people could ask for. How about you? You want to hand me the 
paddle. Yeah. Sitting on top there. Yeah. So I just recently did a review of this one. And you can go watch the review for, you know, all of the data on this. But, yeah, so the, the spin is great on all of Thrive's paddles. And the Azul is, is no exception here. I gave it a four. So far, I've, it's been four across the board for spin on these paddles. And one thing I've noticed, and I think other reviewers have noticed, is that the spin on Kevlar paddles typically is top tier, but just under the highest of the raw carbon fiber paddles. The spin doesn't seem to be to have that higher ceiling like raw carbon fiber does. Anyway, the spin is top tier for sure. Uh, four for me. Uh, four for power, four for pop. One of the things I noticed with this paddle is, yes, there's there's ample power and pop. Usually there's one or the other. Very, very seldomly are both present in a paddle. So you do get good pop with this. Flip side of the good pop is control is, is a little bit more difficult. For me, the control for the Azul was only a three. Mm. You gave it a four. So you, you again, you're having better luck on, on the control thing, side of things. Sweet spot, I feel like this is an oversized sweet spot. I gave it also a four. And then for X Factor, I gave it a, a three. I'm uh, sorry, a two. So two for X Factor for me because mainly because Scott, the owner of Thrive, does a great job with his angle in terms of providing options for educated consumers of, of paddles in terms of, okay, here are the swing weight ranges, and then you can choose your swing weight, 116 up to, I think it's maybe 115 up to 118 or 119, something along those ranges. So you know what you're getting when you get it. There's also a individualized card on each new paddle that gives you your swing weight, twist weight, balance point. Yeah, so really cool. And another perk for that is the ability when your paddle, if you love this paddle and you want to order another one, you can order the exact same swing weight and you can have the confidence that that's what you're getting. And that's not the case with, so far, any other company except maybe Selkirk and Gearbox. They're usually very good about staying consistent with their with their weights. And you would say that's your favorite of their, their line? Of... Uh, Thrive. Of Thrive's line? Mm-hmm. Ooh, I don't know. I haven't had enough okay. time with their other paddles. So I plead the fifth on that one, <laughs> and we'll see. You ever heard of Cy Sims? No. <laughs> Cy Sims? <laughs> Sims was, a, I guess, a clothing retailer uh-huh. back when I was a kid, and their tagline was, where an educated consumer is our best customer. <laughs> that's, that's a good motto <laughs> for Thrive. So uh, let's see. 21 for me total points for the Thrive Azul. And, and 22 for me. 22 for you. Okay. Moving on to the Hudef Viva Pro Gen 3. You want to grab that paddle behind you? You got it. It's up on the wall. The Gen 3. Mm-hmm. So to clarify and to, to avoid any confusion, they're calling this Gen 3. It is not the same Gen 3 as the new YOLO paddles or what the paddle reviewers are calling Gen 3 in terms of using foam somehow and floating cores or framed cores in in your paddles. This is Gen 3 because they originally had a Gen 1 Viva Pro, which was thermoformed. They had a Gen 2 Viva Pro, which fixed some of the issues with delamination and their original thermoformed paddle. And this is their Gen 3 because it's the same shape. So this is an elongated paddle, 16.5 by 7.5 inches, longer handle, but the same shape basically as the carbon... 1X and the, you know, bread and butter filth, uh, all of those shapes are the same. So, Eddie, what are your thoughts on the Hudef? I like the power aspect of it. I mean, it does have, a, I think, a fairly high swing weight. Don't know that without measuring it, but that's the way it feels. But the power was there. Everything else was pretty average. How about you? Yeah, nice and short. So I gave it a four for spin, same as all the others so far. Uh, the power wasn't. It felt very plush to me. It was a very soft feeling paddle. And it was the I could feel a lot of flex in the mm. neck of the paddle when I was hitting it. You know, similar to the That's good observation. Sword, I didn't notice that. Yeah. Similar to the sword and shield paddles. It flexes a lot when you hit it. Um, so the power wasn't big on this. I gave it a three for power. I gave it a two for pop. It had even less pop. Part of that is that, like you said, the heavier swing weight, which is gonna be naturally occurring with these elongated square paddles. The elongated curved top pedals have a little less swing weight, 
little more maneuverable. This is not those. All right, four for a sweet spot. I felt like the sweet spot was mm. actually pretty good, even though it's a narrower yeah, paddle. Yeah, I gave it a two on sweet spot. Interesting. That's a big discrepancy. We're, we're not – well, control is our, is our main discrepancy today, but the sweet spot, yeah, I felt like it had a good one. Uh, and I gave it a, a five for control. Yeah, I just given the kind of the plush feel, the softer feeling face, the really kind of muted – pop and and power i just felt like i had a lot of control with this so this mm. ended up being the highest score i gave any of these kevlar paddles for control <laughs> wow yeah x factor i gave it a one you know that's nothing stand out it's, it's red right uh no red okay it's black <laughs> <laughs> it's black black okay this has the twill weave i can see that but yeah there's no red in there no okay so black on with white accents is you know, good looking paddle, but done before a lot. Yeah, I was not inspired by this paddle. I mean, there's nothing really that stands out about it. The the grip is very nice. I don't know if you remember anything about the the handle itself, but it has a very firm feel, which I really like. I don't know if you want. Yeah, yeah, I didn't notice it standing out for the grip, but you know, it feels feels like a yeah. thermoform grip. That's that's nice. Yeah, so you gave it a zero for for X factor points. Okay, total score of 15 for you, Eddie, and total score of 19 for me. Okay. Moving on. Let's, What's next? So we have J2K Pro listed on the spreadsheet next. Let's jump to the J2K first and then come back to the J2K Pro. You know what? We could talk about them together if you want. Yeah, they're not that different. I, I, I think they're should. pretty different, actually. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So maybe we don't talk about them together. All right, let's start with the J2K. All right. You go first, Eddie. Well, let's start with the, the this company in particular as a whole. I haven't played with anything from this company that I liked. Um, either it's you know that's there's a, it's a power paddle that I can't get power out of, or or some other issue that I have with it. This, on the other hand, is a paddle that I really like from this company. This is this is about as close to as an Azul without being from Thrive. Um, a really solid offering. I liked a lot about this J2K. Power is a four for me. Uh, control and sweet spot are both fours with pop and spin trailing just a little bit in the three. But um, it's all there, so I gave it an X factor point for that. That is so odd that we're feeling such different things on the paddles today. Yeah. <laughs> to me, this thing it hits like a pillow. I love it. I love <laughs> it's it. Great. But it's great. It's a control monster for me, and it's not anywhere close to the Thrive. Azul in terms of power and pop, especially pop. So I dig it, but I definitely say this is a control-oriented paddle and not so much power and pop. So I gave it a three for power, three for pop. The spin on this was fantastic. Uh, this feels like the grit on a new Ruby to me, and it probably gets around. I haven't done the spin test, but it probably gets around the same as a new Ruby, so around the 2300 mark. I was shaping balls as much as I wanted from the baseline, also from the kitchen with, with dinks and stuff. So love the spin. Love that spin in combination with the plusher, pillowy feel of it because it just was a control freak for me. So I was a, you know, I felt confident resetting. I felt confident on third shot drops. I felt confident, you know. I agree with you on control. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, what'd you give it for control? I gave it a four. I gave it a four as well. Okay. Sweet spot, I felt like the sweet spot was fantastic. Oh, yes. Yeah. I gave it a five, which is the highest score of any of the paddles we use today. Yep. I'm at four, but I could, you know, on a good day be talked into a five. Cool. And I give it a two for X Factor. I'm, nice. I'm more generous than you, I think, with X Factor points, but I do think this deserves some some props because, because yeah, the, the other paddles we played with from Sword and Shield, from Honolulu, all kind of unique, but... You know, I wouldn't say that any of them are, are outstanding to me in terms of my personal preferences, but this one stands out. Easy, the lot. best paddle in their lineup. I think so. Yeah, I did feel flexing. So that's one thing with 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 what all of these paddles from Honolulu is the necks all have a little bit of flex in them. Uh, this one's not nearly as pronounced as their elongated and hyper elongated models, but it's not a bad thing. It's just something unique. You know, I felt this and their J two K also. You know, John, that um, that brings me to a thought, and that is maybe some of the differences we're seeing is just, you know, you're a much 
more powerful person than I am. You're much stronger than I am. You have shots that I don't have, that backhand flick that's, man, that is crazy strong. Um, I have strengths, but not in that area. A and that could just be what we're seeing today is just these paddles for some reason are kind of uh, bringing out those strengths or showing up uh, in weaknesses for us. Yeah, maybe it's just because I... Hulk smash the balls. That's all I got. And you're good at everything else. <laughs> John, <laughs> angry. <laughs> right. So I gave the my total score for the J2K was 22. And I'm a 20. 20. So two points below. Yeah. Let's go to the pro. J2K pro. So the difference techni technologically between these two paddles is, as far as I know, that J2K pro just has a tighter twill weave. If you look, you can definitely see it's a smaller weave on the front. So I think that tighter weave gives it some performance differences. So, Eddie, what are your thoughts? I like the look of this one better than the other, but that's the only thing I like better. <laughs> so what are the colors of the, these? Black. Black, okay. No blue or... So I, mean, I, there might I think the J a touch of, like, I don't know, greenish. It's hard to tell in this light, but... I'm pretty sure this one's blue, Eddie. I that can't one see. might be, yeah. I can see blue. That's a little bluer, yep. Okay. So, yeah. Did I say it was blue or black? You said it was black, but okay. maybe you're looking at that one. Yeah. So this one, the, there's two models for this, the blue one and the red one. You have the red one. I have the blue one. Yeah, right? the red's pretty cool, too. The red one looks good. Um, even though, <laughs> even though I don't same? see red, it's the same. The same right? Yeah, okay. just different colors. Even though I don't see red and I do see blue, so far I've been more of a fan of the, the red Kevlar, even though red looks kind of brownish to me. It just The blue is cool, but something about... A blue paddle. I like the blue edge guards. I don't know. I don't know. Just the preference. <laughs> Anywho, so. What do you think of the fine sort of twill weave on this? That does look cool. Yeah, it's very looks cool. nice. Yeah, so I'll, I'll jump in. It sounds like we got very different yeah. impressions of the Pro. So to me, the, the, the Pro, I haven't run any swing, swing weights on it. It feels like maybe a little bit higher of a swing weight to me than the J2K. And what I notice with the tighter weave is, is a little bit of a stiffer face. I would put this more in line with the Thrive Azul in terms of the feel of the ball off the paddle. In terms of the stiffness, feels less like Kevlar, more like raw carbon fiber. And to me, it also got a little bit more pop and power. Still not like a power paddle by any means, but I gave it a, a four for, for power and a three for pop. Uh, I did notice a little less spin on this one, a little less grit. I don't know if it's just slight variations in the in the peel ply that they put on two different paddles. If there's if that's within, the, within the realm of fluctuation for a single model, but still, I gave it a three instead of a four for spin or a five for the J2K. Um, and for a sweet spot, I feel like it has a great sweet spot. I gave it a four for control. I gave it a three just because of the offset that the control that control gets when you um, are using using a paddle with more pop like this one has to me mm. okay and then I gave it a two for the X factor just like the j2k how about you Eddie so you're at a total of 19 19 mm -hmm. my feelings on this uh, I think of all the paddles today are, are so far away from you <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I felt like the J2K was very Azul-like if we're going to make comparisons. This mm -hmm. one was not. This one felt uh, uh, less consistent. It felt less solid to me, uh, less powerful. And again, maybe that's just uh, where the sweet spot is for me or some other factor, but I wasn't able to get power or pop out of this. Um, the control and the sweet spot were okay, but... If I'm going to choose between one paddle from this company, it's not going to be this one. It's going to be the J2K. So I gave this 14 points. Total. Yeah. Total. Your breakdown was three for spin, two for power, three for pop, mm -hmm. three for sweet spot, three for control, and zero, et cetera. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty low scores all around. Well, <clears throat> lucky for you, Eddie, the J2K is cheaper than the J2K Pro. So you Love are it. value for money. <laughs> All right, moving on to Body Helix. So Body Helix has a, I think it's a hybrid, Kevlar carbon fiber, similar to most of these, uh, the X3. Uh, where is that sucker? It's right behind you. Okay, I'll jump in and go first. It's not going to prop up by, on its own, but 
Yeah, so the standout feature in terms of the dimensions for this paddle is the even this has the longest handle of any of the Kevlar paddles that we hit today. It has the curved top. It is elongated, 16.5 by 7.5 inches. Uh, so I do love the longer handle for two-handed shots. Just that little bit of extra real estate on the handle mm -hmm. uh, really goes a long way in, in terms of the feel for, for two-handed backhands. I, I love that feeling. The counterpoint to that is that it shortens up the paddle face, so you, you get less real estate on the paddle face, so everything's kind of shifted up a little bit. So another perk to a long handle is you get more uh, – more power with your shots because you have more leverage. So I did notice that this, even though it's a very soft feeling face, which I do tend to like, and that falls in line with kind of why I do like Kevlar paddles because they have a slightly plusher feel mostly than rock iron fiber. But uh, the power was a four for me, be probably because of that handle, mm -hmm. even though it has a soft Just feeling a face. Longer lever. Yeah. And pop was not, not there for me. It was a very muted pop, so I gave it a two for pop. Sweet spot I felt was okay. It wasn't great. It was a little smaller, probably because it's a shorter face because of the longer handle. I gave the sweet spot a three. I gave control a four, which is a high mm. control score for such a for a smaller sweet spot. But the reason being is because the plushness and the pop is so muted. I felt confident when I'm resetting and dinking that. Yeah, that's not going to pop up. And then X-Factor, I gave it a two because this is a unique shape in the Kevlar space. Uh, most other paddles are either your square elongated, your curved top elongated, or your hybrid shapes just like the 6-0 Black Diamond series. This one's different. It's elongated with a longer handle and a curved top. So I, I like Body Helix for that reason. They also, you know, they, they've... I've been chatting with them, and they've got a lot of good ideas, and, and they're going to be putting out some new paddles that are really interesting to me. So, yeah, I like what they're doing. Nice. Uh, total score for me on the Body Helix X3 19. was a 19. Yeah. What are your scores, Eddie? So I'm at a 16 total. Mm -hmm. um, I really wanted to like this paddle. I did a Google search a couple of weeks ago on six-inch handled pickleball paddles, mm -hmm. and there weren't a lot of search results, but this was one of them. And I think I asked you at that time, I was like, hey, John, are they, is this company going to be sending you anything? Because it looks pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it doesn't play as cool as it looks. Mm -hmm. um, I love the dimensions. I'm a sucker for a six-inch handle. Mm -hmm. But um, just straight down the line, power pop spin, control sweet spot, all threes. Okay. Nothing terrible. Uh, nothing surprising, though. Unfortunately, and a one for a X factor for you. Did I have a one? Yes. Looks like so it. So sixteen total. Okay. Yeah, we're just seeing a trend here where I'm getting higher scores for the most part than you. There are a few anomalies here and there, but maybe I'm just grumpy today. Maybe you're grumpy. <laughs> maybe it's because I'm more fond of Kevlar. I think that's well known. I'm a big fan of Kevlar paddles. Something about the balance they strike and for me in terms of the feel of the ball at the paddle, control power, I just like it. Well, there was one today, oh, well, aside from the Azul, that I was very generous with my scores with. Okay. Is that the next one we're Let's talking about? Let's talk about it. All right. The Hirachi. 11624. Hirachi X, which is the same, same name, name as far as I know as their rock carbon fiber paddle, as if it's not confusing enough. But it is indeed Kevlar. This and is their new Kevlar option. a little option. bluish. Okay. Good. Very, I see a very, blue in there very too. close to black. But it's uh -huh. good. If you turn into the light, it's a little purplish blue. Midnight purplish blue. Yeah, that's such a good paddle shape. Yeah, you're a big fan of their carbon fiber option, the Hirachi X carbon fiber. Uh, yeah. Tell us your thoughts, Eddie, on, on this Kevlar. I might like this more. <laughs> it's a little bit more muted for power and pop. But what you gain in control, uh, spin, uh, I think is worth it. The sweet spot, I think, is even bigger than the the uh, original Hirachi. So, all in all, man, got to give it a couple X factor points for that too, because it's um, they just brought it all together for this one. Just keep making this shape, and we're good. How about you, John? Yeah, you gave it a five for control, which is your highest score for. No, you gave that and the Apes uh, PLES mm -hmm. a five for control. Yeah. So your total score, 22. That's, that's big for And you. it's maneuverable for a fairly long paddle. Right. 
Yeah. So we're differing a little bit on this one, but but fairly closely aligned. So I did notice it got great spin also. I'm, I'm eager to test out the spin on this one. I feel like, you know, it's, it's top tier, like most of the others that we're testing. Uh, but I want to compare that to the J2K because I think the J2K is going to get the most spin. Maybe maybe tied with the Ruby. We'll see. Uh, power and pop, I think we got the same scores. I gave them a three for both. So, yep. yeah, a little bit more muted feel you get with with that Kevlar. Right. So it's going to feel a little different than their, than their raw carbon fiber. That's a subtle difference, but... But yeah, with that muted pop comes more control. I gave the control a four. I also was was fond, pleasantly surprised by the sweet spot on this. I feel like the sweet spot was larger on this Kevlar than maybe slightly larger than their raw carbon fiber one. And I gave it a four, which is a big score for an elongated paddle, which is yeah. more narrow, 7.5 inch width. Normally I can really feel, especially for a longer handle <laughs> version, normally I can really feel that that diminished sweet spot on these uh, wasn't an issue with this so uh, good paddle I uh, gave it uh, a two uh, for X factor points compared to year three um, just because uh, again it's its own mold it's its own shape they're pr- introducing something new they've already introduced the same shape in the Hirachi X raw carbon fiber but uh, I like 11624 as a company they're kind of innovative and clearly they're very popular right now so a couple of X factor points for me. All right. 20 points for me total versus your 22. So that's now, our Kevlar lineup, right? That's our Kevlar lineup, and we can have a drum roll now and, and finalize our standings for all of our paddles. How many paddles did we look at, Eddie? Ooh. 26. 25? Okay. 26. That's a lot of testing. And that's not even a smidge of the market, but... Not even a smidge, but it's a good <laughs> representative sample, I'd say. I think so. And there's still some exciting paddles to come, so we will figure out a way to do something like this again in the future. Maybe add some more criteria into yeah. the mix. And I didn't announce it on last on the last podcast, but I did put up on johnqpickleball.com, my website, the current standing oh, of, nice. of all these paddles. So okay. you can click on the link in the description on the previous podcast. I'll update that standing this week. And so they'll see your way. scores and my scores and our combined. Yes, indeed. So we see the ranking, overall ranking, right. the paddle. There's a column for you, me, and total. So the total score, the, the highest performing paddle so far out of all the paddles we've seen are the Scorpii. <laughs> <laughs> Scorpi- the Yola Gen 3 Scorpii. And you and I came up with a rule. We're not going to allow more than one brand more than one paddle oh, for each brand, brand right. into the the top eight. So we're having an elite eight, mm-hmm. but that'll be eight manufacturers, right? With their best performing paddle. So even though we both liked the Colin and the Anna yep. Gen Three, and they scored exactly the same overall, we had slightly different scores. Forty nine points. That's huge. Forty nine. That's that's yeah. What is that? Three points above the next contender. So mm-hmm. pretty big leap. We're gonna have to choose. Just one of the Colin and Anna, and I think we've we've landed on Anna for now. Hey, I like that choice. I feel like the Anna is a little bit more maneuverable in the hand, lower swing weight, so there's more you can do with it in terms of adjustments with weight and, and things like that, with mm-hmm. grip size as well. Mm-hmm. So I think for that reason, I'd go with Anna. <clears throat> my Colin got a little bit higher score than my Anna last week. And, but like I said, the Anna is growing on me, and I'm going to start playing with it more, and, and we'll see. So I think it's well-deserved for Anna. And we also had to eliminate Ben John's Perseus, which was uh, originally number three, 16 millimeter, but you can't have more than one Yola Gen So representing there. Yola will be the Scorpius 14 millimeter. Let's go. All right. Number two spot has been kind of our long reigning top spot, the Chorus Shapeshifter. A big, still hanging in there. A big sleeper, surprise paddle. Yeah, uh, we both love this one. I've I've talked to several people who've gotten it. Oh, really? They're okay. all impressed with it too. Yeah, a few people have bought the sh- Shapeshifter, and I've heard nothing but positive things. Although one person I think left a comment that their Shapeshifter gave them tennis elbow, but it was not clearly it's not the Shapeshifter's fault. It's it probably came from a lower swing weight or a different who knows different balance weight or something. So yep. overall, fantastic paddle. Just overall balance. Nothing, nothing spectacular like the crazy power and pop of the Gen Three Yolas, but does everything really well. Number three, number three, 
today's uh, Kevlar winner, I think, the Thrive Azul. Yeah. I, you know, honestly, I did not expect the Thrive Azul to be number three overall on their list. I thought, thought maybe top eight, maybe okay. top ten. But, boy, it, yeah, playing with it again today, I was like, it, it's just it's a nice paddle. It, it's just a solid all-around. Just mm-hmm. like the Shapeshifter, I think, is a really good all-around paddle. Right. Not a standout in any one area. It's mm-hmm. not going to kill you in power, but, man, it's just the, the package is so so solid. Yeah. And one thing that probably gave our Thrive Azul a little boost was the fact that <clears throat> it was weighted up to my specifications by Scott, the owner, right. during the paddle fitting. You know, not all of these paddles got the same – attention to detail that the Thrive Azul does. So <clears throat> so that, that may have nudged things up a little bit, but still, even without the lead tape, it's I gave it a slightly paddle. higher score than you did, and it definitely wasn't set up for me. So right. Yeah, it gave was it enough there without that. That's true. Number four on our list was the 6-0 Black Diamond Infinity, another kind of surprising paddle to be up there. Still uh, hanging in after. It, it's it's got to be a year now that it's been out, right? No, uh, not no, no, the Infinity. It came out, it came out uh, yeah, so, winter. Five months ago. Yeah. But, yeah, it's not something that I, I was like, oh, this is going to kill it in our top 26 paddles. Yeah. You know, I thought maybe in the top 10, but, yeah, there it is sitting right there at fourth place, and that's our first edgeless paddle so far in our top eight. And, yeah, I think, you know, just the the maneuverability, the quick hand speed of it combined with the control yeah. of it and the spin, it's just a solid paddle. Number five is a complete surprise. Mm-hmm. If you had asked me last week if this was going to be on the list, I would have said, <laughs> right. no way. <laughs> the J2K. J2K. Number five. Man, what it, a surprise. It's a huge surprise. I, I would not have expected it either, but but playing with it today, you know, we played with it a couple times and and performed well, well beyond our expectations. And yeah, just you know what, John, I should have given it another X factor point because it has the best head cover I've ever seen on a paddle. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm I'm not a huge I, the guy for like right. head covers. Who cares? Right. It's normally just the uh, you know the uh, neoprene, I guess. Right. But man, this thing is sweet. It's just, thanks for bringing that up. I keep forgetting <laughs> to give a shout out to Honolulu Pickleball Company. Oh man, for the crazy level of effort they put into their paddle covers. So I think there's a hook, if I remember on it correctly, so you can hang it on the fence. It's made out of neoprene, but it's it's like finished differently. I mean, you it's, could take this this paddle with the with the head cover on it and chuck it in a lake, <laughs> and it would come floating back to you. It might. <laughs> right. It might. There's no way that sucker's sinking. It might. I, you know, the paddle, I think, has the same attention to quality and detail, I would yeah, say. Yeah, they're all, they're all quality they're, they're paddles. They're doing a great job. But they they... Their blend of everything came together for the J2K, so I'm happy for them. All right, and number five. Number six. Number six was the Hirache X Kevlar. Yeah, we went kind of back and forth as to which 11.6... What's the name of this stupid company? 11.624. We kind of went back and forth as to whether we went with the non-Kevlar or the Kevlar version. Mm-hmm. Where'd we end up with that? Kevlar. Yep. Yeah. Inched out uh, by one point, overall point. So we got 42 overall points for the Kevlar and 41 for the uh, rock and fiber. Yeah, another good performer. Another unexpected one. So how many Kevlar? We've got two, three Kevlars three. in here so far. Okay. Yep. All right. And number seven. Not Kevlar. Not Kevlar. not on the face. But another edgeless paddle, the Pro Drive Encounter. Man, solid offering. Good power. Mm-hmm. Right? Right behind you there. Yeah. I love it that Pro Drive is on our top eight. You know, I feel like they've been they've been around doing their thing for a while. Uh, Will pickleball Will has given him a lot of love. He's the one who turned me on to them and introduced me to their owner. And all of their paddles play pretty well, but whatever combination they've used for this one just all came together just really nice. You know, I remember playing with it a few times with with you and Paul, and you both commented, "You're like, man, you." Playing really well with that paddle. It's just it's easy to use and it's elongated, so plenty of power. It has it has the hybrid honeycomb core with some air mid in it, but it does not feel like an air mid core mm-hmm. by any means. Uh, it's, it's it's nice and plush. I'd say plusher than a rock carbon fiber paddle, which is is, is crazy to me. 
Yeah, and they nailed that edgeless design. It is so sleek. Sleek. Right on. Very sophisticated. Okay, we only got one spot left. One spot left. What's the last spot, Eddie? How about full air? Love that choice, too. I was hoping so bad that the Mach 2 Forza would end up in our top eight. So actually tied in score with the Pro Drive Encounter at 41 yeah, combined that's true. points. So it just snuck point. in. That's, that's a good point. We don't have a, a last spot. We have two seventh places, basically. Yeah, and this one's just solid control all day with tons of spin, right? Yeah. The Mach 2 Forza, the, their wide body option, hit the, hit the market early this year, and it's been phenomenal in terms of its performance, and people are loving it. Everybody I've talked to, similar to the Shapeshifter, have loved their Mach 2 Forza. I'm thinking of picking one up for myself as a permanent part of the bag. I think it's pretty close in shape to the, the Yola Scorpius. Uh, but with different play characteristics. So, you know, when one is too much, yep. the Volair might be the one to have uh, as a backup when control is needed. Slightly longer handle, slightly wider face. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, a really good option. And, and it's not quite as square as the Scorpius, so there's a little bit less wind drag and more maneuverability. Eight paddles. We have our we top eight. We have our eight. eight. How exciting is that? Let's go. So where do we go from here? So semifinals, right? Yeah. Are we going straight to semifinals or are we going to go to quarterfinals yet? We're just we'll going to we're just going to knock it out as fast <laughs> as we can. <laughs> but we'll pit number 8 against number 1 in a head-to-head -head competition. I like it. Likewise with 2 and 7 and we'll keep going from there until we have our winner. Yeah, and again, we're going to play with these paddles, we're going to keep our scores and then we're going to get the number of points won by each paddle yeah. and then use that to decide our winner. So that's for next week and we'll have exciting results to share. <laughs> Well, let's move on. I know you gotta you gotta take off soon. No so worries. I want to first announce the winner of this week's question award. So, uh, if you remember from last week, I offered a brand new Engage Evolution Extreme fourteen millimeter paddle to anybody who left a question in the comments that we decided to read this week. So that person is Metal Blue. You had the question, will copycat companies be able to bypass Yola's patent on their paddles and copy the new Gen 3 paddles? Mm. An extra layer of foam seems so easy and simple to do. So as far as I know, the, the Yola Gen 3 paddles are patent pending. I don't think they have an actual patent like Gearbox does for their, their Pro Series. The Was there a patent on the original foam exterior? Oh, the edge foam? I don't right. think so. No. Maybe patent pending, but I don't think they ever patented that because if they did, everybody else copied it. Right. So, but there's a really good point he brought up, or she, that it'd be very easy. I, no, I shouldn't say very easy, but it would be easier to copy this than it would the crazy SST gearbox technology, right? That stuff is wacky and out there. This is just polypropylene with the sides and top cut a little shorter with edge, with foam before the edge foam. So there's two layers of foam, basically. Yeah. A different um, kind of foam, though. A different kind of foam. This is definitely softer mm -hmm. and more, I'd say it's definitely higher tech than the edge foam. The edge foam is just the kind of the shop foam that you can spray into anything, uh, yellowish stuff that expands. Everybody uses it. It's, it's useful and effective, but whatever they're doing with that really soft foam really enhances uh, the paddle's performance. I don't think it's too... It would be too hard to come by the softer foam or to figure out what it is. My guess is probably a, a polyethylene variant of EVA, not as stiff as EVA, but but it's very dense but soft. Um, but yeah, I think this would be much easier to copy, and I imagine that the factories in China are already offering it to any company who wants to dare use it and, and risk getting slapped with a cease and desist from Yola. So it's happened before, and most people have patent pending technologies, don't succeed with their patent, and it gets copied and replicated. So my guess is, yes, we're going to be seeing copies of this. I imagine that a few companies will be coming out with Gen 3 paddles with foam and a core with variations of floating or strips or something like that right. that we'll be seeing more of those over the coming months. I know I already know of a couple. I guess, you know, we, we can already say that Vatic is doing like a strip technology, replacing some of the replacing some of the polypropylene with strips of foam. That's kind of a variant and I know that, that the 
carbon concepts is is on its way, which is a foam core. I know can't speak of the others. I know of a couple others are, are doing this too. None of them are copying Yola, but they're they're variations of this Gen three technology. But I do think there will be a, a wave of copycats for for Yola. Maybe not in the next few months. Because if you're a startup company and you get slapped with a cease and desist from Yola, <laughs> not a fun place to be in. So I imagine that kind of fear is going to rightfully, I mean, Yola came up with something really special here. They, it really is. Yeah. What are your thoughts on it? Well, my guess is uh, these paddles won't be getting less powerful. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they loosen up. Are you talking about the break-in period? Just in general. I mean, all these new, oh, okay. new technologies, new variations of uh, creating either a you know a floating core or some other uh, technology I mean it's just ever expanding the the envelope of power yeah I totally agree so I think that kind of segues into another question or at least, at least another topic I think we'll skip, skip the optional question that I put in here this week since we're low on time and, and well before we leave that how does Metal Blue get their paddle oh thank you I did not mention that for the last person I did send off their paddle but okay. uh, but they found me anyway you can either go onto my website johnqpickleball.com and click on the contact us button and it'll send an email directly to me or you can go instant message me direct message me on Instagram All John right. Q Pickleball so one of those two options and and I'll get your address and mail off that nice engaged paddle. For next <laughs> week, I don't have the paddle with me, but another exciting giveaway. Um, I will be giving away for the the person who leaves a question that we read next week a Rhombus Pulsar FX paddle, which oh, are coming nice. out Friday, and I'll be making a review to coincide with the release. Uh, and they come in three shapes. I will be giving away the. Most popular of the three, the R2, R2. which is the elongated. Uh, that's my version. favorite. Yes. So it's a can I leave good, a question? good paddle. You, you can <laughs> put your name in the hat <laughs> okay. for sure. All right. Nice. That's exciting. Yeah. Good job. All right. One more uh, topic to cover this week. I wanted to kind of get a little bit into the weeds on the whole issue of have our paddles with these new Yola Gen 3s and Gearbox exceeded our human reaction time? In a, in a way that we're not able to return speed ups or counters at the kitchen in particular. So, um, yeah, just kind of, there was a, a, a reader or viewer that left a question, also emailed me, and I answered in depth in, in the comments section, but I kind of wanted to, to address that here because I think it's an interesting topic. So, his, his, um, question was that wow I looked at your paddle database and and there's only a difference of between like the top tier power paddles and those in like the middle tier of like three to four miles per hour for serve speed is does that really matter and yes it does when you think about the pickleball court in terms of its dimensions so baseline to baseline is only 44 feet it's much smaller than a tennis court so you have less time to react as you get your your dimensions smaller and smaller. So three to four miles per hour difference. When you also look at human reaction time, so the average human reaction time for visual stimuli is only a quarter of a second, so 250 milliseconds. It's faster for, for auditory stimuli, but for visual st stimuli, as a ball coming at you, you only have a quarter second for, on average to react. Now, clearly, elite athletes and other folks have faster reaction times and slower, but that's that's a middle ground for us. So when you kind of start doing the math and look at the ball speed, baseline to baseline, so for example, if you take the Perseus 3, 16 millimeter, which is a very fast paddle, it clocked 57.6 miles per hour on average for serves. So at that speed, a ball would take 520 milliseconds to travel baseline to baseline. So that's basically twice of the average human reaction time. If you take a controller into paddle like the Mach 2 Forza, it clocked 54.7 miles per hour. So that's only a few miles per hour difference. It doesn't seem like much, but uh, that would take 550 milliseconds to travel from baseline to baseline. Still doesn't sound like much. We're only dealing with 30 milliseconds here. So mm -hmm. what difference does that make? Well, when you think about it in terms of the human reaction time, that's actually taking 12% off of your reaction time right? Those 30 milliseconds difference is taking 12% of your reaction time away, which is a pretty good chunk of your reaction time. 
that becomes compounded <laughs> when you get up to the kitchen. When you're 14 feet away and, and you're le leaning in, it's actually only 10 feet. We'll, we'll use 14 feet for calculations here to be conservative. So that becomes really, really important. Did you have a were you going to say something? No, I'm just trying to think about the implications from kitchen line to kitchen line. Yeah. Right? So it becomes hugely important. What are your, what are your numbers there for right. time for some of these so I'm popular gonna, paddles? Right. So I'm, I'm going to be conservative here and not talk about overhead slams or pretending like we're serving from the kitchen line. I'm going to look at pop. So sh shorter swings. Firefight. So. Firefight to the kitchen. And, and my pop statistics on my database are when I drop a ball from – from the extend my hand, drop the ball, hold the paddle at my chest, pop it, right? It's a drop punch volley. And that's even really conservative because the ball has no speed right. to begin with. It's just yep. it's stationary dropping. Normally people are dinking at you, there's gonna be a little bit of compounded speed velocity on ball because the you're you're getting some speed coming at you before you hit it. Anyway. So taking my punch volley speeds, uh Let's look at the Perseus 3. So that one had an average of 37.3 miles per hour. And then the Mach 2 Forza, which you get, again is this control-oriented paddle, had an average of, where am I here, 34.0 miles per hour. Again, so 3 miles per hour, 3.3 miles per mm -hmm. hour difference. So yeah. And when you take do the math, the Perseus ball covers 14 feet and 255 milliseconds. So right up against the average human reaction time versus the Mach 2 Forza at 280 milliseconds. So you're getting 10% 10 per, 10 more time to react to the Mach 2 Forza than the Hyperion 3. And we've, we've all experienced it, anybody anyway, who, who has been on the other side of the court, particularly the other side of the kitchen, against someone playing with a Gearbox Pro Power or a new Yola Gen 3, you can't see the difference as a bystander, but that ball sneaks up on you in a bigger way, you know, in a very noticeable way. And, you know, it takes a while to kind of orient yourself and get used to that extra velocity. And still, you can't react in time sometimes, right? So the something really kind of fun here is that the poppiest paddle in the database now, the new winner for pop is the Anna Bright Gen mm. 3 Yola. And it clocked an average of 38.6 miles per hour for punch volleys, which translates into 247 milliseconds to travel those 14 feet from kitchen line to kitchen line. So the point being here is that at the most conservative estimates where you're just dropping a ball, it's the ball is stationary and you speed up, the Anna Bride is the first paddle to exceed the human, average human reaction time. And unless you are anticipating that ball coming at you with a high degree of accuracy, like looking at that paddle and hoping that it, and holding your paddle up and you're accurate with that, then you're not going to have time to react to it. So it's either going to be a clean winner or it's going to go, it's going to miss you or go out or you're going to get body bagged or it's going to shank off your paddle, right? So yeah, I kind of, I thought it was just kind of a fun math experiment and, and using the data we have from our paddles. And also it, it, it gets into the ethical conversation a lot of people are having about where should we cap the limits of power and pop for paddles. And in my opinion, this is probably it. Maybe even capping it a little lower than the new Gen 3 Yolas. Mm. What are your thoughts, Eddie? So the answer to your question is yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which question? <laughs> Are we beyond the capacity of human reaction time? Mm -hmm. right? yeah. So the answer, uh, I think, is we're definitely there. Yeah. And we're only getting faster and faster paddles, right? For sure. But I don't think you can completely discount anticipation. No. That's a huge factor um, in this sport especially, where those kitchen firefights are all about anticipation. Returning serve is all about, I mean, yes, you're reacting. Mm -hmm. Reaction's probably only 50% of it with anticipation being a huge part of it. And I think that's, frankly, what separates a lot of mid-level players from the more advanced ones. It's not any sort of genetic or biological uh, predisposition, <laughs> predisposition to fast twitch or mm -hmm. fast reaction. I think it's just better re anticipation. I think you're totally right that it's probably about 50-50. It's, it's a good estimate, 50-50 biological human reaction and 50% anticipation. Maybe at times more anticipation. Like if you're just 
guessing that somebody's hitting an overhead slam is going to come right where your paddle is. You're just holding your paddle down, right. and there's no way to, to factor in reaction time there. It's just either luck or yeah. your skill with anticipation. But, yeah, re- anticipation is a, is a huge component of this, but I do think just from, from playing that there is something to that kind of limit we have now. Uh, the gearbox, the new Gen 3 Yolas, it's just we're seeing a lot of people not be able to react to those at the kitchen. And yeah, you and I are four, four, oh, four, five level players. So we're not seeing it in the pro levels or even the five Oh players, but I hear it from everybody, including the pros. They don't, some of them don't like it either. And it does change the nature of the game. It sure does. I mean, anecdotally, I could tell you this year I've been hitting the body way more times than last year. Yeah. And I'm not sure. slower, I don't think. No. <laughs> and hopefully my anticipation is as good as it has ever been. Right. For sure. Yeah. And, yeah, I think it's, it's just something to take into account. And, and this could be with with new exit exit velocity measurements, I think we could, we could put a cap on things, obviously, um, just in a random way or just choose a point yeah. and get, is there a can, paddle that's out on the market today that you would say exemplifies where you think power and pop should be well you know i don't have a i don't really have a problem with the gen 3 yolas I, I think we could cap it there or to be safe i'd probably go just a little lower than the gen 3 yolas and there are several paddles inching up on Neola, this is one of them for for power. That one of the one of the things. So when I'm saying power and pop, that I should probably come up with a combined metric for power and pop because that would be very useful. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's useful to separate them for sure, right? Because different paddles get pop, high pop, and low power, vice versa. Very few paddles get high power and pop, and Neola Gen threes are those. Gearbox are those, uh, but. Um, I think most people, when they think of power, they think of actually pop, those kitchen exchanges, because that's where most battles are taking place at the, on the pickleball court. I digress. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to come up with a kind of a metric of ball velocity or something. It combines both mm. of those two to separate the gearboxes and the, and the Yola Gen 3s from the other paddles that either have high power or high pop. It's high power, like the Pro Drive here. High pop, like the Pro Kinex Black Ace. Right, those are two examples this pro dive also has pretty decent pop regardless any number of paddles that are inching up both in terms of power and pop on the yola gen threes that might be a good kind of place to say okay we're good let's let's stop it here guys yeah we don't need more speed what we need is more forgiveness bigger sweet spots more maneuverability Mm -hmm. you know all the things that make paddles great which is not just power and pop right yeah, and you know that would that would change gameplay. Like Colin John said in our in my interview with them, that would change gameplay probably in a more fun way to watch as a viewer. In terms of people aren't as deathly afraid to speed up anymore if the paddle doesn't have so much power that wh- whoever's countering is going to hit a ball at 100 miles an hour on the counter, and there's no way you can get that back, or it's going to hit you. Right? Would, there's more forgiveness slower paddles are going to lead to maybe more exciting points. But I do think we're either at the the upper limits of where we should be or have slightly exceeded it at this point. Fair enough. That's fun, Eddie. Yeah. Any more uh, comments on this issue? No, I think that's a fascinating study. It'd be neat to see that in graphical or video form so people can really see the difference. Yeah, yeah what 30 milliseconds really interprets yeah to look like in the real world right yeah that, that's a really good point next project <laughs> we've got a few right <laughs> that's right <laughs> i did have some final thoughts but i I've, did not write them down and and i have they've escaped me do you have anything else you wanted to chat about no looking forward to our shootout next week with mm-hmm. our top eight panels that'll be a lot of fun we can um, finally see who's going to come out on top on that one but it's yeah. been a fun road so far Looking yeah. forward to continuing that. Yeah, for sure. It'll be a busy week for me. I'm going to get the Engage Pro 1 review out today or tomorrow, and I've got the Rhombus Pulsar FX coming on Friday on its release. And plenty more paddles coming in. We've got a lot to contend with, Eddie. 
By the way, I bought one of those uh, Kenyans. Did you? Is that okay. what it's called, Kenyan? Yeah, Kenyan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I bought one of those. Fantastic. Um, it's on its way, but um, you know, at this age in life, got a lot of aches and pains, and if it can take care of some of them, even at fifty percent, yeah, I'm all over it. It's worth every penny, but we'll see. That's fantastic. They've got a nice, uh, you know, thirty day uh, trial period. So That's great. why not? Yeah. Yeah, if you didn't watch last week's podcast, the Kenyon Move Plus, I, I brought it up. They sent me one, and I did some research on it, and it's red light there. It's a red light therapy device with LED and laser, yeah. which I think is the first, the only one to the market with the laser near infrared spectrum, which penetrates more deeply, gets into your joints, and actually there's a, a wealth of scientific and peer-reviewed literature on the efficacy of these treatments, and I've had... Enormous success using it on my knee, my elbow, my tricep, my shoulder, my feet. <laughs> That's great. You name it. No, I'm looking forward to it. In fact, your code saved me uh, $1 more than their own. You know, you sign up for uh, email notifications. Oh, and let's you go get... Okay. All right. So $50 off. And again, they're not cheap. They start at $500. You can get it down to $450 with the code. Yeah, not, not not an impulse purchase, not something you want to go out and buy without looking into it, but there's plenty of research out there to be had, not just on Kenyon. It's definitely not cheap, but um, again, it's it's risk-free. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, if I can have pain reduction, yeah, I mean, that's worth every penny right there. Yeah. Looking forward to it. It's very exciting. All right, Eddie. Well, fun times again. Yep. And look forward to next week. We'll get you uh, wearing a real hat soon, partner. I can't. As an archaeologist, <laughs> I'm not allowed to wear it. <laughs> Cowboy hats. <laughs> All right. It's up to me then. All right. Take care. Yeah. See, See you, Eddie.